Diagnosed with a mental illness in the middle of his senior year in high school, a clever and thoughtful teen grapples with keeping it a secret while developing feelings for a brilliant classmate. She encourages him not to let his condition define him. Initially, Adam believed it was an issue with his eyes, or perhaps glaucoma. He experiences things that only he can see and hear. Turns out he is having hallucinations, but his condition is not properly diagnosed yet. According to him, cooking is the only activity that can bring him calmness and silence the voices. Unfortunately, his mother remains unaware of his struggles. During this time, his father left them, and his mother is engulfed in sorrow throughout the day. To bring her comfort, he got really good at cooking, honing his culinary skills. But when Paul, his stepdad, entered the picture, Adam began to feel sidelined. To focus on his passion, he joined cooking school while juggling high school. Regrettably, his visual hallucinations returned, with him seeing people and hearing voices. Three uninvited friends appear beside him, a hippie girl, a bald man who looks like he's in a gang, and another disheveled man, making his life more difficult. This also indicates that his condition is more serious. During a chemistry class, Adam hears a voice calling him, and suddenly everything in the laboratory flies towards him. Of course, it's all his hallucinations, but he is in a panic. He unintentionally touches the beaker in front of him and burns his classmate's arm. In an attempt to escape, he is held down by the guard. This marks his first psychotic break. His illness lands him in the hospital, and this event serves as a wake-up call for his mother, shedding light on the gravity of the situation. The diagnosis of schizophrenia marks a turning point, disrupting Adam's once serene life. School becomes a challenging environment, with expulsion, bullying from classmates, and social isolation becoming his daily struggles. Taking a drastic measure, his stepfather decides to pack away all the kitchen knives, abruptly halting Adam's cherished pastime of cooking. The suggestion of sending him to a care facility is floated, adding another layer of complexity to Adam's already tumultuous situation. He introduces his imaginary friends, who have never gone away, Rebecca, the hippie, the bodyguard, temperamental, and Joaquin, always it and drinking. Adam's mother enrolls him in a different school, dedicating time to studying Adam's condition. She hasn't given up hope, tirelessly searching for schools and exploring treatment options. Adam's mom, persistent in her efforts, takes him to an experimental trial for treatment. In her unwavering determination, she actively seeks out opportunities to improve Adam's condition, bringing him to new avenues in the pursuit of better health. While attending school, his stepfather seeks out a Catholic school for Adam. The principal expresses willingness to accept him, given the condition that he adheres to taking medicines, and attains a score of more than 90 in the annual test. Adam faces a crucial decision, accepting this offer would be contingent on whether he wants to apply for a cooking school in the fall, and it's considered his last chance. However, Adam is hesitant and wary of medication. A meeting takes place with the principal nun, involving Adam, his mom, and Paul. Distraction arises when the bodyguard throws a cigarette on the nun's habit, triggering a blaze in Adam's hallucinations. Despite his efforts to concentrate, the principal's office transforms into a sea of flames. Adam tries to maintain composure, reminding himself that he doesn't possess superpowers. He understands that it's not magic, rather, all these are illusions in his mind. The nun sets a condition that Adam should achieve a GPA of 5, and they request regular updates on his conditions. Leaving the room, Adam is followed by his mom. Unhappy with how Paul treats him, Adam dismisses his mom's defense of Paul. As Adam heads to the toilet, he inadvertently becomes privy to a conversation between Maya and a classmate, centering around a payment issue. This accidental intrusion exposes Adam's presence, leading to a confrontation with Maya. Suddenly, Rebecca and Joaquin, his imaginary friends, make an appearance. Fearing potential leaks, Maya implores Adam to keep their discussion confidential. In the midst of his hallucinations, Adam insists he hasn't witnessed anything. Despite Maya's insistence on secrecy, Adam appears harmless to her. Struggling to lead a normal life, Adam grapples with the haunting presence of a deep-voiced black cloud, a persistent hallucination that serves as a constant reminder of how he perceives himself as a detriment to his family's well-being. In his pursuit of normalcy, Adam diligently takes his medicines, aspiring to free himself from the grip of the deep-voiced black cloud and his trio of imaginary friends. Meyer approaches Adam, curious about his out-of-this-world behavior, particularly his habit of bringing his own food. Surrounded by his imaginary friends, Adam is distracted, but manages to deceive Maya by claiming to suffer from an extreme headache syndrome. Despite his fabrication, Maya persists inquiring about his condition. Adam, in an attempt to divert attention, introduces himself and speculates that Maya might be involved in illicit activities like drug dealing. As their conversation continues, Maya reveals that she is the school genius, known for her strong-headed nature. It becomes apparent that she makes money by assisting others in writing their theses and completing homework assignments. Meanwhile, Adam's imaginary friends express disapproval of him taking medicine, leading to their gradual disappearance. Adam discusses his grades with his mom, and when she suggests Paul as a solution, Adam opts for a tutor. Seeking to improve his academic performance, he approaches Maya for tutoring. 
Their initial meeting in the bathroom doesn't quite align with tutoring plans, but Adam, armed with knowledge of Maya's secrets, persuades her to agree, settling on a fee after a bit of negotiation. Meyer undergoes an interview with Adam's mom and Paul. While they are impressed, the $200 cost seems steep, leading to a proposal of $75. Surprisingly, Meyer accepts the reduced fee. Adam escorts her to his room, and there they exchange tales of their achievements. Adam, keen to showcase his cooking prowess, leaves Maya thoroughly impressed. The tutoring sessions commences smoothly, and as Adam's mom drives Maya home, awkward goodbyes punctuate the budding connection between Adam and Maya. The medications gradually exert their influence, causing the deep-voiced black cloud and his three imaginary friends to gradually fade into the background. Coinciding with this, Adam's academic performance sees a marked improvement. While grappling with the side effects of the medication, notably muscle twitches, Adam navigates the complexities of the situation. Despite these challenges, he experiences a newfound sense of normalcy, fortunately without additional side effects like diarrhea. This positive transformation doesn't escape notice. Adam's mother, too, observes a considerable improvement in his demeanor, he seems brighter and more focused. With a growing passion for cooking, Adam not only hones his culinary skills, but takes it a step further by preparing breakfast for his mom. She, in turn, commends his culinary prowess and acknowledges the positive changes. Adam sees heat pads on the table and thinks it is for Paul, but it is actually for him because of his muscle twitching. However, a subtle shift occurs in Adam's mood when he realizes that his mom has been talking to his psychiatrist. Later, during a round of confessions, Adam takes his turn. Despite his skepticism about God, the priest proves to be approachable. Adam, in search of a confidential space, unlike his sessions with the psychiatrist, opens up about his desire not to be looked after. In a surprising turn of events, Adam wakes up one morning with no auditory hallucinations, the first time in what feels like an eternity. Simultaneously, his grades reflect a positive upturn. To express his gratitude for Maya's support, Adam invites her to a dinner at a lobster place. During their meal, Maya reflects on her initial impressions upon meeting Adam. Curious about Maya's motivation for taking on side hustles despite being a valedictorian, Adam learns that she finds deep satisfaction in helping others. Adam also expresses his love for cooking and his passion for it. They go to a restaurant and dine. The evening takes an unfortunate turn when Adam encounters former high school classmates, who mockingly call him straitjacket. Despite their taunts, Adam tries to ignore them. But the situation escalates when one of the boys throws a drink at him. As they laugh at his mental health struggles, the classmates approach, intending to cause trouble. Maya steps in to defend him, leading to further escalation when the guy hurts her. In response, Maya takes matters into her own hands and punches the blonde boy, forcing the group to retreat. After the incident, Maya, somewhat puzzled, questions Adam about his decision to leave school in the middle of the year and attend one outside his district. To conceal his mental health struggles, Adam fabricates a story, claiming he had a physical altercation with them at his former high school. The principal confronts her with the truth one day, causing Sister Catherine to join in expressing concerns about Maya's future. This confrontation prompts a transformation in Maya, who begins to distance herself from Adam. Despite his persistent invitations, Maya remains elusive. Feeling the weight of the silence, Adam seeks solace in confession, sharing his girl troubles with the priest. The priest suggests that Maya has ghosted him. Filled with worry that Maya might have known the truth about him, Adam turns to the priest for advice. However, the priest's response is a biblical quote, leaving Adam dissatisfied. Pushing for more guidance, Adam is met with straightforward advice, and that is to confront Maya. Adam embarks on a mission to locate Maya, armed only with the knowledge that Maya's father is Manuel. Eventually locating the man, Adam introduces himself and is warmly welcomed inside. Despite Manuel's disability and use of crutches, Adam is impressed by his resilience. As the conversation unfolds, Adam uncovers the significant financial struggles that Maya and her family are facing. To Maya's surprise, she arrives to find Adam cooking for them. Manuel, expressing admiration for Adam's culinary skills, is impressed by the transformation of something from microwavables. Despite these positive moments, the atmosphere shifts when Maya, visibly upset, retreats to her room and vents her frustrations at Adam. In this tense moment, Maya elaborates on the urgency of finding a well-paying job in a restaurant to support her family, especially with her father's injury requiring care at home. To add more, she has the added responsibility of caring for two younger brothers, amplifying the heavy burden she carries. Adam, still eager for tutoring sessions with Maya, is met with her gratitude and appreciation as his grades soar. In celebration, Maya decides to give him a tour of the restaurant kitchen, a moment that leaves Adam mesmerized like a child in a candy shop. Transitioning to the dining room kitchen, the atmosphere takes a somber turn. Attempting to cook for Maya, Adam's muscles betray him with uncontrollable twitching. Even holding a knife becomes a challenge, and the spasms worsen. While Adam discloses a school fight to Maya, he selectively withholds details, gradually relaxing as he confides in her. 
Despite the culinary attempt, the taste falls short due to Adam's overzealous use of spices, though he perceives it differently. Beyond this, a quick disappearance of symptoms doesn't alleviate his growing concerns. Loss of taste is accompanied by an inability to concentrate in class, plagued by duplicated images. The escalating muscle twitching demands Adam's attention, leaving him unable to remain indifferent, causing uncontrollable tremors. Adam, in his search for the potential side effects of his medications, discovers that incontinence is likely to occur in the later stages. Meanwhile, his family family, dining with Paul, make a significant announcement. Adam's mom is pregnant. Although Adam outwardly expresses happiness about the news and the prospect of a new baby, internally he grapples with controlling his symptoms. As his family discusses the joyous occasion, Adam delves into the list of symptoms and potential side effects of the the grim inventory includes unsettling possibilities like anal leakage. Filled with anxiety, he goes so far as to express a desperate wish that someone would end his life if such a humiliating symptom were to manifest. From that point onward, he slyly ditches his prescribed meds. On the down low, he acts like he's popping them in front of his mom, but slickly tosses them aside. Over time, his trio of buddies gradually makes a comeback, and, naturally, those unsettling sounds and spooky shadows make a comeback too. In the school setting, his awareness gets sharper, catching the creepy voice echoing around him. After class, Adam is tailed by Maya, but he's bombarded by unsettling images, ending with a loud warning for Maya to back off. The principal catches the whole scene. In the wee hours, Adam, deep in sleep, is suddenly disturbed. He hears the cries of a baby. His mother, now with another kid from his stepdad, reassures him that nothing's changed. Adam, however, has different thoughts. Approaching the cradle, the lingering whispers of dark shadows suggest his mom doesn't care for him, and the new baby is the one she always wanted. Right then, his stepdad flips the lights on. He shares news of a call from sister Catherine. Despite his stepdad's sincere concern, Adam stays indifferent. He flat out tells Paul that embracing the role of a dad is something he adamantly refuses. He perceives his stepfather's fear of him, never recognizing this person as a genuine family member. In this world, it's like this, people readily extend kindness to a cancer patient. But for those grappling with schizophrenia, folks tend to sidestep and not offer support. Adam talks to Maya and expresses his regret. To make amends, he brings her mac and cheese. Adam takes Maya to an outdoor screening of her favorite movie, Never Been Kissed. Acting on the advice of his imaginary friends to follow his feelings, he attempts to touch Maya's hand. However, the voice intervenes, eventually making physical contact with Maya's hand. Adam confesses his love to her and invites her to a dance party without divulging his illness. Maya reciprocates by kissing him and agreeing to attend the prom. But only if Adam tells people that it was Maya who initiated the invitation. He shares a monologue with his psychiatrist about his mother entering the dating scene again, drawing parallels to his own struggles. Adam's essay earns him the first place spot, yet happiness eludes him. Seeking solace, he visits Father Patrick, who advises him to forgive himself. However, what Adam hears is a disturbing suggestion instead. Spiraling down the rabbit hole, Adam, yearning to attend the prom, faces opposition from his mother. Defying all orders, he decides to go anyway. As his impulsiveness grows, he begins to succumb to the insidious influence of the dark shadows. Feeling trapped with no apparent remedy for his affliction, Adam wholeheartedly religiously follows the words of the dark shadows. These malevolent entities goad him into risky actions. Consuming an entire bottle of medicine, changing into disheveled attire, Adam arrives at the prom. Concerned, Meyer observes his odd demeanor. Internally, his heightened and sensitive senses oscillate as the voices fluctuate. Making an effort to appear fine, Adam is caught off guard by the principal, but swiftly redirects, escorting Maya to the dance floor. Tormented by the echoing deep voice, Adam clutches Maya tightly. In this moment, the principal swiftly intervenes, yet in Adam's skewed perception, the faces of those around him contort into monstrous shapes. Overwhelmed, Adam pushes the principal to the ground, and as Maya hurries to assist, Adam, recognizing the severity of his actions, flees. Haunting dark shadows relentlessly pursue him amid blinding beams of light propelling him to ascend the top bleachers and, tragically, plunge over the ledge. Subsequently, Adam is ushered into an ambulance. He keeps on resisting the efforts of medical officers. Ultimately, he awakens in a hospital bed, with his anxious mother and Paul awaiting him. However, regaining consciousness, he discovers himself bound by restraints, making his emotions intensified. Maya learns about his illness from his mom, and Adam lashes out, yelling at her to go away. His anger spills over to those nearby. Fearing for Adam's safety, his parents opt to place him in a treatment facility. In this controlled environment, he must adhere to a strict medication schedule, living under continuous observation. Even amid others facing mental health challenges, Adam still wrestles with a sense of isolation. Later, Father Patrick drops by before the graduation ceremony, extending continuous support. He imparts insights into Adam's inquiry about the purpose of confession. 
Now equipped with a deeper understanding of Adam's predicament, Father Patrick stands ready to assist him, particularly on a spiritual level. In the course of the visit, Adam's mom and Paul also visit him. Engaging in conversation, Adam conveys a profound sense of hopelessness, believing that his life has come to an end, without a diploma and the possibility of not pursuing culinary school. Adam's mother uncovers letters from his stepfather to the principal. This revelation dawns on Adam, bringing to light that his stepfather has consistently been an undying supporter. Contrary to Adam's negative assumptions, his stepfather strongly condemns the principal for Adam's expulsion, revealing that Paul genuinely cares for him, even without expecting Adam to accept him as a father. Resolving their misunderstandings, Adam chases them and descends the stairs, then warmly embraces his stepfather. With their differences settled, Adam earnestly urges his mother to withdraw him from the facility. He believes that there's no remedy there, and persisting would mean forfeiting his dreams and future. Now, he desires to face his challenges on his terms. Accompanied by his parents, he joins the graduation ceremony. Although initially met with resistance from Sister Catherine, a nod from Father Patrick secures his presence. Adam is determined to complete his essay on stage. Despite the resurgence of dark shadows attempting to silence him, Adam envisions his diploma, earning the courage to reveal his struggle with schizophrenia to the gathered students. The entire auditorium falls into silence as Adam calmly explains the nature of his condition, sharing his experiences and emotions, while encouraging them to explore further on their own. Persisting in this explanation, the ominous black cloud of the deep-voiced shadows gradually fades away. Acknowledging the severity of his illness, he remains resolute in his determination, uplifted by the love and support surrounding him. In his final address, Adam asserts that he may have an illness, but he refuses to be defined by it. Following the speech, he exits the classroom to cheers from Rebecca. Maya rushes to catch up with him. Adam, feeling the weight of his struggles, apologizes to Maya and decides to leave, not wanting to burden her. Maya, although not upset about his lies, is furious about his reluctance to give her the chance to choose. She declares her love for Adam, and they share a kiss. Paul and Adam's mom, witnessing this, exchange a kiss themselves, visibly happy for Adam. Under pressure, the school awards him a diploma. Adam and Maya's relationship flourishes, while his mother gives birth to a child surrounded by the support and company of family members. Slowly overcoming anxiety and fear, Adam gazes at the open door, still haunted by the voice. Recognizing his struggle, Paul closes the door to offer relief. Finally, successfully accepted into culinary school, Adam continues to make strides in self-improvement. 